QuickBooks Online 2024, reversing entry for unearned revenue or customer deposit advanced payment. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to be like bookkeeping Einstein with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file. We set up in a prior presentation, opening the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The report's on the left. In the favorites, right-clicking on that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab. Right-clicking the profit and loss to open a link in a new tab. Right-clicking the trusty TB to do the same. Tabbing to the right, closing up the hamburger. Changing the range up top, 010124 tab, 0220. Let's do 03, actually, 031124 because we're doing reversing entries this time. Selecting the drop-down month by month and run it. Tab to the right, repeat the process, hand boogie close, range change, 010124 tab, 033124 tab, drop it down, picking up the months and run. Tab to the right, close the hamburger, change the range, 010124 to 033124, dropping down to the months and run it. Let's go back to the balance sheet. We're doing the reversing entries now, remembering that adjusting entries happen at the end of the month or year, typically as of the cutoff date, in our case, uh, February 29th, and they are to make the financial statements as close to the accounting method as possible as of the cutoff date, usually an accrual method, but it could be similar method for cash-based methods or a tax-based method. In this case, we've been looking at an adjusting entry last time for accounts receivable and the unearned revenue. So just a quick recap on this one because this one is a little bit confusing and one that you're not going to see every time for many industries because many industries don't have an unearned revenue situation. So this is an area, if you are a bookkeeper, that you might be able to specialize. You might be able to say, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to be able to manage well like a rental property that always has to deal with these customer deposits or these computer application type of situations that always get the money before they actually do the work and come up with a system. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com so that I can easily do their books and possibly specialize in those kind of areas. This is, has some potential for some specialization. This is a desktop screenshot that we're using for the online software just so we can see the flow of the forms, noting that on the revenue cycle, at the end of the cycle or at some process within the cycle, we expect money to be going up, cash to be received, in other words, for uh, work that is being done. Usually that happens from the arrows left to right. Sometimes we might just have a deposit form. We wait till something clears the bank and then record it as revenue when we get it, like a YouTube YouTuber or something might do it that way. Sometimes we might have a cash register still on a cash-based system, like a restaurant where we get paid at the same point in time we do the work, but we have to record it at the cash register and then typically make the deposits. Sometimes we have to do the work first, such as a law firm, CPA firm, uh, landscaping, where we do the work and then see how how much we're going to bill for the work based on possibly the hours and the materials and then we'll have to track the accounts receivable receive the payment and then make the deposit noting that's most businesses that's the flow of most businesses some businesses it's going to be backwards where we get paid before we do the work and those businesses would include classically book problems would be say newspapers 
magazine sales, where you have a subscription model. More currently, you're talking computer applications where you get paid in advance, and then you're gonna do the work in the future. So technically, uh, what should happen is you get the money increasing cash, but the other side should not go to revenue yet because from a revenue recognition standpoint, you haven't earned it. You received it, but you haven't earned it. Also just wanna point out here that if you're doing your, your books for taxation purposes, then taxation purposes might have a different threshold as to when you need to recognize revenue for taxes. The tax code may well say, I don't care about the revenue recognition principle. If you got the money in some cases, I want you to pay us with it, right? The tax code might deviate from an accrual method in some cases, in which case, again, you want to special, if you're specializing in that area, determine, you need to determine, are you doing the books primarily for tax preparation or for external reporting or for both? And then what would be the best kind of accounting method to be using to accommodate the needs that you're, that you're looking at. But from a revenue recognition standpoint, on an accrual basis, we haven't earned the revenue, so we would want to record it actually into a liability account, which would be called unearned revenue or customer deposit, typically. However, we saw from a bookkeeping standpoint, it's easier to use accounts receivable oftentimes. So let's jump over here, see why that is the case, noting that in accounts receivable, this is the account that has the subledger tied to it. So let's go to the tab to the right and open up a subledger, right clicking on it, duplicating it, and then we'll open up the reports on the left hand side, closing the boogie, scrolling down to who owes you. We're looking at the customer balance detail report. Let's run it as of the cutoff date of, uh, let's see, cutoff custom 022924, boom. And, and so you can see internally, this is the document or form that's that's showing you the detail of what's in the accounts receivable, not by date of transaction as the transaction detail report would be, but rather by customer. And so this customer is showing a credit balance, a negative amount of 200, which works great from an internal perspective, because if I'm communicating with Eric Music, I could tell them, hey, look, you have a credit balance that we can apply to a future purchase. But for reporting purposes, it's understating the accounts receivable because it should not be a negative amount. If we owe Eric Music something, it's not an, an asset. It's not a negative asset. It's a positive liability. So from a bookkeeping standpoint, what we said is we said, hey, look, I'm going to keep the negative accounts receivable from a bookkeeping standpoint. Let's look at it internally, by the way. If I go into the internal uh, sales area, we could see that under customers and Eric Music, uh, where where's Eric Music? That internally, if they contacted us, we could see clearly what is happening. We're like, yeah, you're, there's a 200 credit balance. It was created from from an estimate. I can apply that to a future purchase. So that's that's great internally, but it it's 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 not exactly right from a financial statement reporting basis. So we let. Uh, QuickBooks do it this way from the bookkeeping perspective. And then we just said, hey, look, if I need to do an adjusting entry at the end of the year, I'll do an adjusting entry. And I'll just basically increase the accounts receivable by whatever uh, customers have negative balances to it and put the other side into the unearned revenue account. So it's proper for reporting purposes. Noting that this is not exactly the type of adjusting entry you see in a book problem. In a book problem, the, usually the issue is that all the revenue is going into unearned revenue. And then you need to determine how much of the revenue has been earned by determining how many newspapers have been provided, usually on a monthly basis, right? You actually deliver the paper or you deliver the magazine or deliver the application. And then you decrease the unearned revenue recording the other side to revenue as it has been earned. You, you, with QuickBooks, you might have that similar kind of problem. You, can, you could still have that issue, but you might actually be able to automate that to some degree. Because if you, if you get paid in advance in a subscription model, you might be able to then assign automatic uh, uh, invoices to apply to that payment 
to happen on a monthly basis so that it will it will then decrease either accounts receivable or possibly unearned revenue depending on how you set it up you know on a monthly basis so that issue is still kind of an issue but it might not be something that you need to do in the adjusting entry you might actually be able to automate that as part of your accounting process we have an ex another course or presentation uh on that or uh if you want to look at that in more detail but this is also an issue that comes up a lot of the times and that's this negative receivable also realize that these two accounts that were impacted with this adjusting entry are not classically adjusting entry things because both accounts are on the balance sheet usually adjusting entries have a timing issue one of the accounts being an income statement account the income statement account having to do with the timing in this case we have the the classification of a negative accounts receivable versus a positive liability so that means that if you're a small business you you might just be doing this for taxes and there's no impact on the profit and loss and if you're just doing a schedule c for tax preparation you might not need to do the adjusting entry you might be able to get the benefits of having a negative receivable it's probably not going to mess up your internal decision making process and you don't need to do an adjusting entry if you're just doing a schedule c because you're, you don't need it for taxes and you're not doing any external reporting if you are doing a more advanced tax return or a more complicated tax return like a, a schedule c or a partnership then you might need to do the adjusting entry if you're doing external reporting for a loan bank audit then you would think you might need to do adjusting entry in this case so that's what we did we increased this one if i go into it we did an adjusting entry and if i drill down on it it looks like this and so there it is noting that i had to record a name to the accounts receivable account because quickbooks will not let us post it without a name because they're trying to force us to have a sub ledger for accounts receivable broken out by customer that will still match and tie out to the the uh amount on the balance sheet so so we're gonna have to uh to to deal with that and so that's going to be our our one of the issues that we will uh, deal with now we have to do a reversing entry for this one because the idea here is that is that i i the bookkeeping side of things is great so i want to keep the bookkeeping side the way it is uh but i want to adjust it for external reporting purposes which we did here and then i want to get back to where we were before after so you think well maybe i could just delete that transaction but you don't want to delete it right we lose the audit trail also note internally that if i go into my customer over here we created a new customer and we put it down here in zzz your options whenever doing an adjusting entry for accounts receivable with a journal entry instead of using forms like an invoice or a payment form are that you could create another accounts receivable account that's an accounts receivable adjusting entry so that you don't mess up the accounts receivable at all but you can't make it an accounts receivable type of account because then it will still have a sub ledger so you could make an other current asset called accounts receivable adjusting entry and that way you won't mess up the sub ledger at all and you'll have an account just for your adjusting entries or you could use the accounts receivable and then add a customer but possibly create a new customer such as we did zzz customer so that it will be at the bottom of the list so all the ugliness from journal entries in the sub ledger will be in that area instead of in the actual customer detail or you can enter the transactions in the actual customer detail assigning it to the customer that that has the issue noting that you're going to have some messiness in the detail so let me show you what that looks like in zzz here's kind of the detail we had we entered this journal entry into a zzz customer so that's kind of ugly because because an increase is usually an invoice that's why i moved it into another customer let's reverse the transaction and i'll show you what that looks what that looks like so i'm going to go to the balance sheet i'm going to right click on the balance sheet and duplicate it so i can get back into that journal entry by drilling down on the on the journal entry so i'm going to pull that to the left close up the hand boogie i'm going to drill down on the accounts receivable for february 
and then I'm going to go into that 450, the journal entry. I'm just drilling down to get to the journal entry because QuickBooks has this cool tool of reversing it. So if I just reverse this one, it'll take all of the accounts and do the opposite, uh, making the debits credits and the credits debits, which is exactly what we want with a reversing entry. So I'm just going to say reverse it. It changed the date to 3-1, has a new entry, and then everything looks good except the description I want to now call reversing entry. So I'll just copy that and put that down on everything. I don't want it here. There's nothing there. So now we're going to decrease accounts receivable, which is usually the form that decreases is usually a payment form. So, but we don't, we're not having a payment here. It's a journal entry, right? So we're decreasing. We had to assign it to a customer or else QuickBooks won't let us post it. We're not assigning to an actual customer, but rather made up a customer called ZZZ so that it will be at the bottom of the customer list, hopefully not messing up our, our bookkeeping. And then we have the unearned revenue on the other side, decreasing unearned revenue, taking it back down to zero, reversing what we did so that the books were correct on an accrual basis as of the cutoff date of 229 February 29th, the end of February. And then we reversed it to get back to the process that works from the accounting or bookkeeping side of things with a reversing entry following the cutoff date on uh, March 1st. Let's save and close it, check it out. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm, I'm actually gonna close this one and go back into the balance sheet and then run it. And if I go into uh, uh, accounts receivable here for March, <laughs> then we see we have uh, the reversal. So here's the reversal of the 450. If I go back to the prior period, let's go to 022924. Then we could see we put it on the books before. So it's correct as of the cutoff date. And then we reversed it right after. All right. And so I'm going to go back and then say exit. And then on the other side of things, the unearned revenue, we put it on the books for February and then it's been reversed. It's back down to zero in March. If I go into March, we see the 450 reversal. If I change the beginning date to go back to 229, we see the input that was input at the end of, of February reversed at the beginning of March. Let's go back. Let's take a look at the sub ledger. And so if I go back to the sub ledger here, run it as of 2.29. Uh, uh, well, let's run it now as of 03.31.24. So if I run it there, now the ZZZ has these two in it. So it's still kind of messy. My sub ledger is messed up because I'd like these two to net out against each other and basically disappear. The totals at the 2270150, which is good. And at least these are not in one of the customers like Eric Music. I don't have that ugliness up in Eric Music, but I think I could fix that. First though, let's take a look at the balance sheet. We're at 22701. So this is at on the balance sheet 22701. Let's go internally now and look at it inside here. So I'm going to go back out of my customer and then back into it or refresh the screen is what I'm trying to do. Go back into ZZZ. So now we have these two items. So here's the, the journal entry we made on 229, then we reversed it. I would like this to be closed out with a green thing here. So notice if I did this internally in Eric Music, this would look messy, even messier than normal right now because uh, it's a journal entry and it's not closed out to each other. So it would confuse us internally, but I can close it out against each other by creating a payment form. So I'm going to select the drop down and select a payment form. Usually this would be the form we would use when we get a payment from a customer. We're not actually getting a payment. What we're going to do instead is apply what is in essence a credit balance to what in essence is a mock invoice kind of thing because this is kind of like an invoice and increase and this is kind of like a credit some kind of credit because it's a decrease so if i use the payment form i can use this to tie those two things together so zzz i'm going to do it as of three one and i'm not going to add a payment method i'm, I'm going to keep it in payment to deposit the payment form usually decreases accounts receivable 
and puts the other side into some kind of either the checking account or this clearing account payment to deposit. But in this case, what I'm doing is I'm going to say accounts receivable is going to go up and back down again, meaning I'm just tying together the fact that there's a credit balance, a decrease in accounts receivable and a debit balance, an increase. So I'm just ticking and tying these two journal entries out. So nothing should actually be recorded. Notice that this is something that most CPA firms might not know how to do because they understand things from a financial statement standpoint. So they understand how to do the debits and credits and make the financial statements correct. What they might not be so good at is this kind of thing to clean up the internal bookkeeping for the normal bookkeeping process. So this, if you're in a CPA firm, this kind of thing, if you can convince the partners who are usually older people that might not understand some of the dynamics internally and the importance of doing this kind of thing for the bookkeeper inside uh, for internal purposes, they're just trying to get the financial statements correct. You might be able to add some value uh, by pointing this stuff out, okay? But if I record this, then we've got these are checked off now. So now, even if I recorded this transaction into a customer balance, it, at least in other words, if I did this in Eric Music, for example, uh, it wouldn't mess up the bookkeeper too much because these things should be tied out and closed out against each other, even though it's still kind of ugly looking because you've got these journal entries uh, in there in the detail. So in other words, if this was in an actual customer field and, and it was Eric Music and Eric Music contacted us and we're trying to explain the audit trail to Eric Music of his customer information, invoices and payments, it's going to be a little bit more difficult when I'm going, oh, well, yeah, well, then there was like this credit, but it's a journal entry. That's weird. I don't know. And then there was this debit, but at least they've been paid and, and everything was paid out with those, right? That gets a little confusing. You, the bookkeeper would have to know that this was something that was done by the CPA. I think it's better. That's why I argue to put it in its own customer file. So all the ugly stuff is kind of in its own customer file. Okay. So if I go back then to, to this one, my report and run it again, notice that the ZZZ is gone now because those two have been collapsed against each other. We no longer have an outstanding journal entry. So that actually works pretty nice. 2270150 still ties out to what's on the balance sheet for March 2270150. All right. So that's where we stand as of this point in time. And if I go to the to the to the profit and loss, this is where we stand. And let's take a look at the trustee trial balance. It's going no impact on the profit and loss, by the way. We already mentioned that. I won't go into that again. Trial balance. This is where we're at. So if you're following along and you're in the same place we are, then great, because I think we're in an excellent spot here. I think we've been uh, been moving along quite quite nicely. So they're good work. We leveled it up. All right.